ओम नमो
So Krishna here is actually establishing that we are not this body, but we are spirit soul. And death is simply a change of body. So every embodied soul has to undergo this final test called as death. So Bhishma and Drona, both of them, they have also passed. You know, many times people say, well, death means you just lose everything. Everything is over. It's not true. Well, you know, death happens even in this very body. Srila Prabhupada explains that while we are in this body, we all remember, and even photographs are proof, that we had a boy, you know, a, sorry, a baby body, the body of a baby. We had that body. Where is that body now? Well, that same body has, of course, grown, but that body has ceased to exist. It is gone. It is perished. And we've grown into, from, you know, from boy, from, you know, birth from then you know we had the baby life we had our childhood then you know adulthood and now we are in our adulthood and then slowly we will be in our late ages and then slowly we'll you know dwindle and then it is death so that is a fact of life that once you know childhood goes adulthood comes in when adulthood youth comes in when youth goes then adulthood comes in so like this these are different stages of life and our bodies have completely undergone those changes those tiny bodies that we had is no longer there anymore we have grown out of them those bodies have are no longer existing so similarly at the time of death, when this body becomes no longer useful, at that time, this body is given up by the soul, and the soul takes on another youthful body, a childhood body. So they're born again. So then again, the entire cycle starts. So Arjuna is, you know, explain, you know, Krishna is explaining like this to Arjuna that, you know, you should not, like even the previous verse, that, you know, natva evaham jatu nasam, that never was there a time when I did not exist, nor you, nor all these kings, nor in the future shall any of us cease to be. It just means that Krishna is saying that, you know, the, it's we are not that the body is permanent. The body is temporary, and the soul is the eternal. It is eternal, and it is permanent. So... In text 13, Krishna is going on to explain that the embodied soul continuously passes while in this body, from boyhood to youth to old age. And similarly, the soul passes on to another body at death. So after hearing this, all of these arguments by Krishna, all of this understanding by Krishna, Arjuna is telling you know, Srila Vishwana Chakravarti Thakur and Srila Baladev Vidya Bhushan, they are writing in their commentary that Arjuna seems to understand what Krishna is trying to prove and that Arjuna is agreeing with Krishna, that Bhishma and Drona, you know, he says that, yeah, I agree that they would definitely be better off, you know, once they give up their old bodies, you know, so, and when they'll get a younger body in their next life, it is definitely better for them. But Arjuna is saying that my reluctance to fight O Krishna is because I have a current relationship with their body. It is based on their current body. He is my grandfather. He is my teacher. Yes, he may pass on to another body, but that body I won't recognize. I may or may not, but that will not any longer be my grandfather. I would have left the body of my grandfather. It's a very logical argument that Arjuna is giving here to Krishna. And to that, Srila Vishwana Chakravarti Thakur is commenting that by connection with the self, even one's body, it becomes an, it becomes an object of affection. You know, when we have connection with one's body, 
then, you know, anything that is related to this body, like our own children, our own siblings, they also become very dear to us. I mean, forget about our own siblings or forget about our own children, but we develop attachment to even our own um, spouses who are not, you know, like directly bodily related to us in that sense, like our own children, but we also develop attachment to our own friends, our kith and kin. So, you know, all of them we develop attachment with. So when the body is destro destroyed, when the body is given up, naturally you experience unhappiness. So this one, a very beautiful example comes to mind that after Krishna explains the entire Bhagavad Gita to Arjuna and Krishna tells Arjuna that, my dear Arjuna, I have told you everything. Now deliberate upon this fully and do whatever you wish to do. Yati chasi tatha kuru. Do whatever you wish to do. Krishna is not saying even once that you should do this, you should do this, you should do this. He's saying, well, this is the duty of someone who is a Kshatriya. He's just giving out what is logical, um, you know, as duty-bound as a living entity, as being a Kshatriya. Krishna is giving instructions based on that. And in the end, after telling everything, Krishna is giving the free will to Arjuna. At that time also, Krishna is not expecting that Arjuna will say, yes, yes, Krishna, now I completely understand. You spoke the Bhagavad Gita to me and now I completely understand. I, I, you know, Krishna did not expect that from Arjuna. If he would have expected that from Arjuna, Krishna would not have made the statement of Yathe Chasi Tathakuru, that do what you wish to do, O Arjuna. But Krishna did say, I have given you the full knowledge, deliberate on it fully, and then do what you wish to do. Deliberate on it fully means, think about what I have told you. Think about it. And then you do what you wish to do. If you find what I have said to be logical, then you accept it. So Krishna is giving that free will to Arjuna. And what does Arjuna respond Nashta moha smritir smritir labdha. That Krishna, all of my moha, everything is now, all my attachment, everything is dispelled by your, you know, transcendental sword of your knowledge that you have given me. And karishya vachanam tava. I will do what you have told me to do. So this is the final, um, you know, dialogue exchange between Krishna and Arjuna. So Arjuna declares and he accepts that he has deliberated on the teachings of the Gita and that he has understood it. And being understood it, he is now accepting that he is going to follow what Krishna has told him to do. And therefore Arjuna starts fighting. Now, in between the battle, we all know the most unfortunate incident of Abhimanyu, the death of Abhimanyu that happened um, in the battlefield of Kurukshetra. It was a very unjustified battle that, you know, it was, uh, Arjuna was cheated and uh, Abhimanyu was killed with, without following any rules and regulations of the battle. The rules and regulations that were discussed at the beginning of the battle were all broken during the death of Abhimanyu, the way the Kauravas killed Abhimanyu. So many rules were made that um, one, um, one uh, you know, uh, fighter will not be attacked by many fighters. If of if one of the fighters become, you know, without any weapons, then they are not going to uh, charge or attack, um, you know, anyone without any weapon. So they disregarded all of these rules. You know, Karna, uh, Dush, Duryodhana, Dushasana, so many, all of them, they surrounded Abhimanyu and they killed him. He was actually weaponless also but they just mercilessly killed 
this, you know, and Abhimanyu was this 18-year-old boy. He was an 18-year-old boy at that time during the Battle of Kurukshetra. So Abhimanyu was killed so unjustifyingly. And when Arjuna, uh, you know, Arjuna was actually led away, you know, in from the battle, uh, you know, as a strategy so that he's not there to protect Abhimanyu, then in the evening when, uh, you know, Arjuna and Krishna came back, Krishna knew exactly what had happened. So Krishna took Arjuna. And in fact, you know, many times this question can be asked that why did Krishna not stop Arjuna from going away? Because that other, um, you know, Krishna did stop. Krishna did stop Arjuna saying that don't go. You know, let's not go. Let's stay here. Your army needs you here. So Krishna did say that to Arjuna, but Arjuna was, you know, getting the uh, war cry from this other warrior. He was, um, you know, throwing a challenge at Arjuna. And when a Kshatriya is thrown a challenge, if they don't accept it, then they are not considered to be Kshatriya. So to follow his Kshatriya dharma, Arjuna went and he disobeyed the orders of Krishna. So therefore, at every step, you know, we understand that Krishna, if Krishna is saying something, then it is beyond the jurisdiction of any kind of law. It transcends any kind of law. So we can understand that if, if Arjuna would not have gone, then probably the entire situation would have been different. But of course it was a, you know, all of the plan was there, you know, in the ultimate sense of it. You know, Goranga Prabhu has done a very beautiful analogy on this Mahabharata. And he says that this particular battle of Abhimanyu and Abhimanyu getting killed by the Kauravas, by the breaking of all the rules, it was... Krishna wanted that the rule-breaking should be done first by the Kauravas. He did not want the Pandavas to deviate from dharma. And um, once they deviated, then Krishna said, now we are not going to do, you know, anything like this. So when it came time for Duryodhan to be killed, by Bhima, at the end of, you know, like the Battle of Kurukshetra, at that time, Bhima was uh, instigated by Krishna that, you know, they were actually doing Gada fighting, you know. And uh, Bhima was instigated by Krishna that attack on the Thai. He was told to attack the Thai. And... Uh, the, uh, you know, Duryodhan's entire body had become that of like thunderbolt by the blessings of his mother, except for his thighs. And Bhima had promised, he had taken a, you know, promise that he's going to, uh, you know, destroy the thighs of uh, Duryodhana because he had gestured Draupadi to come and sit on his thigh. So that was a promise that Bhima had taken. So all of this, you know, and the rule of Gada Yud, the rule of Gada fighting is that it should not go below the waist. But Krishna defied this law. And as soon as Krishna defied this law and told Bhima to attack Duryodhan on his thigh, Bhima didn't think even one bit. He said, oh, Krishna is saying, I am doing it. And he attacked and he, you know, killed Duryodhan like that so but um so there's a reason for everything to happen but nonetheless again um you know for how should we give priority to the words of krishna to the words of our spiritual master or should we give priority to what we know as prescribed duty so that is also taught here by these great souls, that they always time and again give this instruction that always and under all circumstances follow the instructions of the spiritual master. Do what he says, then we are safe. If we just simply follow the instructions given by our spiritual master. So like this, we understand that, um, you know, Duryodhan, uh, sorry, um, Krishna and Arjuna, 
on this battlefield they were you know um they were you know going on like this but then when they returned that day in the evening um krishna knew that abhimanyu was no longer there and arjuna came into that tent he saw the dead body of his son the lifeless body of his own son lying on the floor and arjuna broke down he was crying profusely arjuna was crying tears of separation so a question may be asked in this regard that arjuna just heard the bhagavad gita he said that he understands he has deliberated fully upon the teachings of krishna then why is he crying when his own son has just done this dehi no smeniya tha dehe you know tatha dehantara prapte his son abhimanyu has gone on from death he has gone on to accept another body so why is arjuna crying the explanation given is that arjuna is crying because there is some attachment you know devotees are soft hearted so there is some attachment we cannot deny that so bodily attachment will be there it is natural it is very natural just like how shri vishwanath chakravarti thakur is explaining here that it is something very very natural but at the same time how did arjuna become the perfect disciple of the bhagavad gita is that he did not question krishna that krishna see i did what you told me to do but you did not take care of my son what did you do how could you do this to me i am doing exactly what you are telling me to do but you are not taking care of me and my you know extended bodily uh, relations you are not taking care of them he did not question krishna like that radha arjuna became more you know uh, violent he made a promise that you know he understood that jayadratha was the person because of whom you know this entire uh, episode of abhimanyu leaving his body happened so arjuna made a promise that he is going to kill jayadrath by the end of next day before sundown the next day he made that promise so this is the test that we may be definitely affected by you know the um when we miss our you know kiss and kin when we do that when we miss our own relatives when we miss our siblings when we miss our children that attachment will be there it is very natural but is that attachment stopping us from rendering our devotional service then that attachment becomes a problem but if that attachment helps us in rendering our prescribed duty which is our devotional service for arjuna for doing the battle you know performing the battle uh, of kurukshetra was his devotional service to krishna that was his devotional service so you know participating in the kurukshetra battle was his devotional service so arjuna did not stop his devotional service he continued on with much more greater vigor so that is the test that how much are we really um depending on the mercy of krishna how much faith are we having in the mercy of guru and krishna that we can you know continue whatever the situation may be we are continuing on and not letting our um, attachments stop us from rendering service so that is the instruction that krishna is giving here to arjuna and he also specifically tells arjuna in the next verse in text 14 that o son of kunti the non permanent appearance of happiness and distress and the disappearance in due course are like the appearance and disappearance of winter and summer seasons they arise from sense perception of sign of bharata and one must learn to tolerate them without being disturbed 
So Krishna is saying, Arjuna, yes, I understand that you will have bodily discomforts when your near and dear ones are in difficulty. You will have trouble. But try to tolerate that. Try to, you know, just like understand that just like going out when the summer and the winter seasons are coming, um, you know, the coming of happiness and distress, uh, you know, is also like the coming of the seasons. They will come and go. Nothing is going to stay permanently. Neither is distress going to stay permanently or neither is happiness going to stay permanently. But the only way that we can be eternally happy, we can experience bliss, is when we try to connect ourselves and put ourselves on the spiritual platform. One time, we were actually, um, we were having a very deep conversation with Srila Giriraj Maharaj and Maharaj told us that, yes, you know, certain situations in life can get very, very challenging. You know, disagreements, um, questioning, unnecessary criticisms. When we are, you know, when we become recipients of such things, it becomes very, very challenging to even chant our japa. But Maharaj said that the way that we can really, um, you know, focus and, you know, continue on with our devotional service if we try to live in the spiritual world, if we try to live in the spiritual realm, connect to the spiritual realm. And how can we do that? You know, the answer was given, you know, the answer was given by Jai Pataka Maharaj. He said that, you know, Maharaj actually said to Mohini in that conversation, he said that, you know, yes, you wrote me the email, but if I would have just re replied to your email, it wouldn't, I wouldn't have been satisfied. Because I need to make you realize how wonderful Krishna is. And it cannot be done with just a few words over an email. You have to feel it. You have to realize it. You have to experience it. You have to experience the wonderfulness of Krishna. We have to experience the wonderfulness of Mahaprabhu. And then he told of beautiful pastime, and then he said that when we hear these pastimes, should we just hear and forget? But the purpose of listening to these pastimes is that so that we can continue to meditate on these pastimes, try to live in those pastimes then whatever is happening around us will not at all affect us. That is why Srila Prabhupada said that a devotee is like that lotus flower or a lotus leaf, that even if it is in the water, the water does not stand on the lotus leaf. If you try to put a droplet of water on the lotus leaf, it will just trickle down. It doesn't stick to the lotus leaf. So a devotee is like that, that although they are in this material world, but they are connected to the spiritual realm. And how they do it is by immersing themselves in, you know, um, the remembrance of Krishna's, you know, wonderful pastimes. That is the way that we can, you know, truly, truly stay connected to Guru and Krishna and be not disturbed and not be disturbed by anything that is happening around us. It does take practice. It does take, uh, you know, deep pondering upon, and it does take a desire for us to be situated in that spiritual realm. Because once we get a taste of staying in the spiritual realm, we will want to go back there again and again. That is the beauty of Krishna Consciousness. <coughs> so um, I also wanted to make one more point before I conclude that um, you know this particular verse the f number 14 that we read the non-permanent appearance of happiness and distress I saw a living example you know in the form of Mohini's family you know like how 
you know, those of us who've met them had the fortune of meeting that family, you know, both parents, uh, mother and father, and the sister. Elder sister is amazing, you know, like she is a chartered accountant by profession, but she has given up her job. She was working for a very reputed company in India, but when the sister contracted this particular situation, um, she gave up her job so that she could take care of Mohini 24-7. And although they are undergoing such difficult situation, you know, with their this doll-like child, you know, she's like a doll. Mohini is really like a doll, you know. And um, this beautiful child that they have, you know, we don't know. Krishna only knows how long she's going to be present uh, amongst them. But I never saw even a moment that they're sitting and, you know, despairing over it. They have smiles on their faces. They are planning for their future services. I found out that, you know, Mataji actually is very glorious. She designs outfits for Shishi Radha Vindavan Chandra in Pune. That is her service, but since she got sick, she has not been able to do much. But, you know, that is her service. She's an excellent cook. She's a disciple of Srila Bhakti Charu Maharaj, and she is uh, his cook. Whenever she's around, she cooks for Bhakti Charu Maharaj. It's a glorious family, you know, and I saw it living with them, you know, that how, you know, that they are utilizing, you know, they're living life moment by moment. They're choosing to surrender to Krishna every moment of their life. It is amazing to witness that. It's really amazing to witness that. So um, we pray at their lotus feet, you know, that... Um, Somehow, because <clears throat> we will also be in that situation, one or other. And uh, our prayer is that Krishna would have his mercy upon us and give us some favorable situations that we can remember uh, how wonderful Krishna is, how wonderful Mahaprabhu is. So trying to live in that way is is something that we should really aspire for. So we'll end here. If there's any questions, comments, or reflections. Mataji, it was a very wonderful class, Mataji. I really felt connected to it after. I was just completely disconnected from all this. really felt really nice to get connected to all this again. It was wonderful to hear that how Giriraj Maharaj said that, you know, you the solution to deal with all this when we have such great problems in our life is that you know, we need to live in the spiritual world and at least try to live in that and that also comes by desire and you know, Krishna's mercy and we need to hear the pastimes and desire to be there. And that was the key highlight for me, Mataji. Thank you, Mataji. Thank you, Gopita. Hare Krishna, Mataji. Thank you very much. Really wonderful class and like, you know, I, I got lost somewhere in thinking that uh, how that it's so devastating and it always comes to my mind and I am very much uh, scared about this that uh, you know that the loss of uh, uh, dear and near ones so means what I uh, realized Mataji is that uh, is it something like that that uh, means when uh, we are very much attached with like our parents uh, with our children and especially with our spouse. So uh, what happens, Mataji, when we live together, uh, we uh, start thinking and fixing our goals. And we fixing, uh, we, we, means we try to fix our uh, purpose in the same way. Means what he, he will do, I will also follow him. Or sometimes what I will do, he will follow me like this. So then uh, at at certain point when uh, someone leaves, uh, that time what happens uh, is uh, if we are not very much uh, fixed in Krishna consciousness, then we feel very much deviated from the purpose of life or from the goal of the life. And that time we feel very, very devastated that, oh, what shall I do now? Because no one is uh, there to accompany me. 
to uh, achieve my goal or to achieve my purpose but uh, if if we are in the process of bhakti if we are in the process of uh, practicing uh, krishna consciousness then uh, our spiritual master is there if he is not physically there then his uh, instructions are there his uh, uh, vani is there the teachings uh, are there his uh, followers are there who are there to help us so that time actually if if my goal is uh, to get uh, krishna prema then so many things are there to help me so in that way we don't get deviated if the person who is very very near and dear to me but if he is not there uh, physically so means i was just uh, thinking like that mother ji so what do you think mother ji did i get it correctly okay absolutely yes yes it is the right way of thinking it is the right way of thinking yes yeah because always i have that fear in my heart that if i uh, lose someone that means I, always i feel that i will get uh, div- devastated you know i will get divided i i cannot live uh, any more i feel like that mm-hmm. but after hearing this uh, words dekhi no mean yatha de and the next one uh, master process to kante and the way you explain to me about uh, when uh, abhiman abhimanyu uh got killed but arjuna did not complain to krishna he just uh, mm. followed krishna's instruction yes. so after hearing this so means the thing is that whatever happens to our life like up and down we should not get uh, means it's not that we should not uh, uh, lament because it's very natural that we will lament because exactly that, uh, exactly uh, if we don't lament then shila prabhat said you know uh, there was one time what happened is um, uh, when, when shila prabhat would leave from one center he would go to another temple no so one time um, and mostly you know when shila prabhat would leave devotees would cry you know in separation from shila prabhat and um, and then there was this one devotee shila prabhat noticed that you know it is this is there in prabhat memories you know um he, this devotee disciple is saying that there was this one disciple prabhat noticed that he was you know he had a blissful smile on his face and he was you know like closing his eyes raising his hands and saying jai prabhupad jai prabhupad jai prabhupad like that he was smiling and saying and prabhupad looked at him and everyone was like crying crying and but this devotee was like this had a smile and you know he was looking so called blissful so prabhupad immediately caught it and prabhupad said this is very superficial it's very um you know unnatural that when the spiritual master leaves you know physically from one place you are so emotional not that you know you say yeah ja yeah yeah you know yeah i have i am so this it's all very superficial so that means prophet said that that means there is no attachment whatsoever to the spiritual master so like that um again you know the same kind of thing what abhimanyu what happened with abhimanyu and arjuna you know we see that in the very near future you know i'm sorry near past we see that uh, when shila prabhupad you know personally disappeared from this you know when he physically disappeared from this world when shila prabhupad left in 1977 all of shila prabhupad's disciples felt extreme separation from shila prabhupad but that did not stop them from following the instructions of shila prabhupad and that is why iskon is what it is today because of that love that the disciples of shila prabhupad have for him so now as descendants of shila prabhupad we are just second generation so this society is going to last for the next 10000 years Mm-hmm. so we have to try and pass on the same you know heritage that we have received from our spiritual master we have to pass it on to the coming generations 
so that this legacy of Srila Prabhupada will live on and that will give, you know, our future generations the determination to carry on forward for that love of Srila Prabhupada to follow his instructions, you know. So... Yes, Mataji. Very, very nice, Mataji. And it's very true. I have seen uh, many devotees also, like uh, like one of my uncles. He, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, my aunt passed away, but after uh, her passing away, my uncle got more serious. He became more serious and he is uh, doing a lot of service uh, in the service of Krishna. So, Miss Day, like, like you know, as, as you said that they took it as a uh, like you know as a blessing or as a more opportunity that they can serve Krishna. Those who are very, like very serious and sincere. Yes, Mataji. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for your beautiful realizations. 